This is an American school bus. It's one of the safest vehicles on the road today. One of the reasons it's as safe as it is is because municipalities are required to replace them every 10 to 15 years. So there are lots of buses coming out of service every year in really great shape. Now, the great majority of them uh, are sold uh, south of the border. They go to Mexico and South America where they form the backbone, backbone of the public transportation down there. Uh, but a few of them stay in this, in this country and are converted to motorhomes, like mine. One of the other great things about them is they are really, really cheap. I bought this baby for about 10 cents per pound. Let's take a look inside. So, of course, the first step is you need to remove all the seats, and your best friend there is going to be the 3.5 inch angle grinder. Um, most of the bolts you'll find will be rusted, and you'll have to just cut their heads off and uh, pull the seats out. Uh, once you get the seats out, you can strip up the rubber flooring. Um, the rubber fl flooring, incidentally, is the source of that characteristic school bus smell. And unless you really enjoy that, you're going to want to get that rubber flooring out of there. Uh, next step, you'll want to begin building partitions like the one you see behind here. And um, in this case, we've separated this bus into a master bedroom at the very back, and then a bunk room for my girls. We have a three-quarter bathroom on board with a full-size shower, toilet, sink. Um, you'll notice the uh, medicine cabinet. This is an actual 19th century mirror. It has a maker's mark inside uh, for 1831. Uh, I found this at our local town dump, and my father-in-law built this uh, very nice uh, medicine cabinet for us, for the bus. Now, out here, we've got a full kitchen with a uh, double sink. This also came from our town dump. Uh, propane stove, refrigerator, uh, all the comforts at home. Uh, cabinets above containing our uh, dishes. We like to use uh, uh, washable dishes rather than uh, disposable things when we're camping. Um, and again, most of the materials you see here, the, the, the wood, the cabinets, um, the cabinet doors, these all either came from our town dump or from uh, sources like Craigslist and Freecycle. This particular bus has an engine in the back and what's called a forward control cab. That means the driver position is in fact in front of the front wheels. It gives you a much better view of the road, uh, but more importantly in a motorhome it means that it's much quieter up here and it has a better ride. So uh, I think of these forward control rear engine buses are really the, uh, the best ones to convert into motorhomes. Um, the seat that I'm sitting on, this is not in fact the stock seat. This is a eight-way power leather heated seat from a mid-1980s Audi that a friend of mine gave me. Uh, also up here we've got some uh, additional appointments that aren't stock for a school bus. A uh, pair of nice speakers. Of course you need a good stereo. And another uh, rescue from our town dump. Uh, 40 channel CB radio, which is really useful when you're on the road and you want to find out what's on up ahead. Okay, so we've got a 100 gallon potable water tank and a 100 gallon septic tank uh, connected to both the kitchen, uh, bathroom sink, toilet, and shower. And they're mounted underneath the bus, so why don't we go take a look at those? Here underneath the bus, we've got our 100 gallon septic tank, and it is suspended with a frame that I made from old bed frames, recycled bed frames. Over here we've got our 100 gallon potable water tank and since that's the one that's most likely to be full most of the time I've mounted that on the center line of the bus to keep the, uh, the, the total weight low and the center of gravity low. And then up here we've got the water pump that services the kitchen and the bathroom and the plumbing that sends the water to where it's needed in the bus. Most of the electrical infrastructure for the bus is back here in the engine compartment. We've got two batteries for house power, two batteries for engine starting, an electrical distribution box to send 110 volt AC to the various plugs and appliances in the bus, a 1500 watt inverter to provide that 110 volt AC while we're on the road, 30 amp uh, battery charger to charge our batteries while we're camping, and of course the 10.4 liter diesel engine. One of the things people usually ask me about my bus project is, why would you want to do this? Why wouldn't you simply buy a, a used RV if you wanted a cheap RV? Um, well, 
Yeah, there's two main reasons. The first and the primary reason is because I love to build things and um, building the bus project, uh, my, my biggest payback was the enjoyment of the actual construction. Uh, but a second and also very important reason is safety. Uh, modern RVs are built a lot like this travel trailer. There's an aluminum skin, a pine frame, and then paneling on the inside with a layer of fiberglass in between. Uh, not a very strong structure to be in in a moving vehicle that might, say, have an accident. School buses, on the other hand, are built with a layer of steel, a frame made out of tubular steel, and on the inside, an additional layer of, you guessed it, steel.